Good morning. This is Shomna Chattopadhyay from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad, Sharkhand, India. Today our topic of discussion is welding process. This is a terrific joining process and very extensively applied in the industry and it has lot many applications in a developing as well as in developed countries. So the title side one can see those uh, workshop or shuffler where the different kind of welding things are taking place for the shipbuilding operation. A brief history of welding. Welding is started in late 19th century. The scientists, engineers apply advances in electricity. With the discovery of electricity, it becomes really relevant. Electricity to heat and join metals. The Chatelier St. Jules, though forge welding were existing even in the civilization of industrial civilization, forge welding in non ferrous alloys, people are doing it out. But whatever the popular today, arc welding and other things all begin in Europe in the late 19th century. Then early 20th century, then prior to the World War I, welding was not trusted as a method to join two metals due to the crack issues. Then the strength was very, very weak because people don't know that the arc has to be prevented from the oxidation and the prevention methodology was not discovered. That was the problem before World War I. So in that point of time, extensive application was not there and welding was very limited and people thought of that it is a process of academic interest, not as industrial interest. So those joint issues are there. Then in 1930s and 40s, industrial welding gains acceptance and it is used extensively in the uh, war effort to build tanks and aircraft for World War II. The reason is that then people have discovered, people have discovered those methodologies in order to prevent oxidation of those welding um, work pieces and all those things. And, uh, uh, the strength becomes really good and great and if it is done appropriately, the strength of the joint is more than that of the parent material. If we put it into a tensile testing machine appropriately arc welded, the parent material will break not the joint and that is very, very important, a unique selling point of those arc welding process so extensively used in the World War II. So modern welding, the nuclear space age also helps bring welding from an art to a science. All those things which are very much skill dependent, now it is applicable in all forms of applications of those industry. So there are different classes of welding, fusion welding, pressure welding and all those things we will discuss. Uh, there are many methods through which people find it out, those welding process associated with. So mainly the fusion welding means localized melting, localized melting of those materials, mainly metals and that can be subdivided into two forms. One is homogeneous and another one is heterogeneous, homogeneous similar material, heterogeneous dissimilar material and there lies the challenge because they are all having uh, the different melting points to marry those two dissimilar material of different welding points is always a challenge and very specifically for the fusion welding process. And this homogeneous welding process and all those things uh, are subdivided into gas welding, then electro slag welding, high energy beam welding, electric arc welding and all those things and electric arc welding is the most popular one. It is divided into shielded metal arc welding process or the stick welding process, then metal inert gas welding process, then TIG tungsten inert gas welding process and also another division it is not shown that is known as submerged arc welding process where the, where the arc is covered with granular flux so that the oxygen contamination is not happening. Very good quality and high deposition rate welding is possible by those things all those uh, non-standardized girders, channels, angles and other things can be used, can be 
produced uh, by those uh, submerger cooling process and it is semi automatic semi mechanized so not much of the skill involved another one high deposition rate welding is also electro slag welding and other varieties are there and in case of other group that is pressure welding then friction stair welding that is discovered in 1991 by Thomas Wen in UK so that the <laughs> machining in one side skin machining will be done in order to in order to weld those things and that is a terrific process uh, non-fusion uh, based welding process and very suitable for dissimilar material without going into the details of the localized melting it can join say copper with aluminium and dissimilar material so it's a terrific process and terrific discovery with minimum heat affected zone and minimum tmaz the thermomechanically affected zone and that can give lot many applications even in mission critical applications like aerospace domain the another heterogeneous welding is brazing and soldering they are also known as a very good uh, in heterogeneous welding also one large should be there from the friction welding process brazing we do all those tool tips and other things are brazed with the tool shank very popular and shouldering only to build connectivity in case of circuits and other parts so that it will be shouldered by the lead lead is a soft metal but heavy metal and very low melting point so it will ensure the conductivity of the two joining pieces where less strength but conductivity is required so that is the part of uh, the um, heterogeneous welding, brazing and soldering. Also, we can do friction stair welding also in case of heterogeneous welding process. So, these are the main uh, subdivisions. And what is weldability? Weldability is the metallurgical capacity. The parent material will join with the weld metal without formation of deteriorous constituents or alloys. Very easy marriage marriageable material marriageable marriage material between two uh, the metals parent metals so that is known as weldability and the mechanical soundness the joint the you the most important criteria of welding is the joint of the strength most of the welding is for bringing a very good with a strong effect in terms of the joint that is the requirement of the welding process and the joint has to be there and soundness of the joints free from discontinuities free from gas porosities free from shrinkage slack or cracks so all those all those defects are also there in the casting and as welding is a localized melting process so it also inherits these perennial problems associated with the casting but in lower dimension but those things has to be joints has to be free from these defects in order to make a sound joint otherwise the the strength of the joint is compromised and next the service ability though welding is a permanent joint but welding is able to perform under varying conditions of services extreme temperatures corrosive environments fatigue high pressures and all those things where we have to find it out that the welding is feasible and according to that we have to select these welding processes. Build beauty of some of the welding processes like say gas welding uh, processes like say oxyacetylene welding. So we don't require electricity. Even inaccessible places where a lot of uh, bridges and girders and other kind of uh, infrastructural development has to be carried out without having the electricity because electricity is not there it is also the requirement of some infrastructure we have to build all those things so there without electricity if one has to do that people have to use these gas welding so that is a terrific measure also without using electricity one can do the welding process so the best principle of fusion welding the melting principles are the base metal is melted only those parts where it will be joined not those parts where it will be a, it will be distant apart uh, for uh, uh, the joints of those things so best metal is melted and filler metal may be added where we require higher deposition rate we have to add filler material where deposition rate is not that demanding we don't have to add this filler material 
and heat is supplied by various means uh, that is oxyacetylene gas the crude way of supply heat without the dependence on the electrical energy then electrical arc which is very very popular by electricity and there is a electric arc will be there and that is responsible for localized melting of all those peripheral parent material and the filler material to form a common pool and then subsequent solidification of those pool a good sound joint will be achieved. And then plasma arc the we will create uh, the temperature of the sun the skin of the sun temperature and that is responsible for again the localized uh, melting of all those molten metals and all those things and common pool solidification joint will be there and laser also do does the same thing only problem with the laser because today's technology cannot handle very very high power laser so laser welding is very restricted to the thin precise that is also doing by laser lights it will be melted common melting pool will be uh, created and on the basis of that after solidification good sound joint will be there laser welding is very restricted to a very precise thin plate application if it is a thicker plate and other things laser efficacy is less some lot of problems this barreling effect and all those things will come out of it because of the laser cannot handle precisely and high power laser generation is also a great challenge in today's technology maybe tomorrow laser welding and other things will be more applicable to thicker and thicker plates so fusion welding and all those things we have the first thing people have come out of this fusion welding is coated electrodes coated electrodes is acting as a flux so that after melting that will create a jacket jacket a fluidic jacket uh, of all those uh, molten metal so that they are not oxidized with the presence of uh, oxygen of the atmosphere so the strength of the joint is not compromised and according to that the weld will be solidified and once it is solidified this flux will be in the um, peripheral part of it as a slag and then they will be chipped out and sound will, uh, will be achieved associated with that. So that coating will be there, only coating will be there only uh, full of the part, only the tip part it will be relieved because it will be holder and putting those uh, circuit. Uh, so every part is not coated where the joining part that is the uh, cons uh, because all those arc and other things are those coating part is insulated. So the core part will be not covered uh, this uh, end part of it and uh, that will be holded so that the circuit will be completed. So the electrode coating will be there and core wire will be there that is coated with that and holding atmosphere will be created with the arc, arc pool will be there and they will be solidified and shouldering slag uh, this solid sorry, so solidified slag will be produced after the flax is uh, melted and then solidified and then they will be chipped out in order to expose those sound weld uh, formation. So the during uh, weld metal protection, during fusion welding, the molten metal in the weld puddle is susceptible to oxidation because uh, temperature increase means the random motions of the molecules and atoms. And whenever random motions and molecules, uh, the, the possibility of the marriage with them with the atmospheric oxygen is great. They will form the oxides and once oxides are there, they will bring non-homogeneity and weakness their strength is uh, not great and they will bring with uh, weaknesses in the sound joint so the susceptibility of oxidation and other things has to be prevented how by creating some jacket so different kind of strategies inert gas weldings uses inert gases in order to form the jacket then the Manual metal arc welding or stick welding, there the flux are belted to create the jacket. In case of submerged arc welding, it will be solid granular jacket. So, these are all different strategies in order to cover the molten pool so that the oxidation possibility is less and the soundness of the weld is ensured. So, it must protect the weld pool from the atmosphere, and those methods are weld fluxes inert gases uh, we can do vacuum also vacuum also a good strategy because as there is no no air the possibility of oxidation is minimum
ना रहेगी बांस ना बजेगी बस हो गई सो वैक्वम एंड अदर थिंग्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर क्रिएटिंग दीज काइंड ऑफ एटमोसफेयर वे द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ ऑक्सीडेशन विल बी मिनिमम एंड साउंडनेस इज एन शर्ट so typical will fluxes uh, that will be sio2 titanium oxides the ferric oxide magnesium oxide al2 o3 and all those things oxide because uh, white table is already oxidized we cannot oxide it far so that is the advantage of keeping these oxide layers <laughs> so that uh, one cannot oxide that thing and that will act as a good jacket as a prevention of oxidation or in case of uh, inert gases produces a gaseous shield to prevent the contamination sometimes you produce all those things and mixture so that at a elevated temperature it will produce those gases and that will act as a shield to prevent the contamination oxygen contamination and all those things are act as a scavenger to reduce oxides they will take away all those darts and maybe floating on the top part of it ultimately which is solidified as the Uh, slag and that will be chipped away and allowing elements to the world also it can use some of the alloys which is beneficial for the soundness of the world and influence the shape of the world be during the solidification so appropriate character of those uh, fluxes will be like that so in our gases there are many in the periodic table but depending on the economies we will use argon is a very good available in our gases uh, not that high cost then helium nitrogen also also little possibility of nitrate but less amount of and then carbon dioxide also handy wherever non mission critical operations are there carbon dioxide can be good handy in our gases in order to prevent the world pull from these contamination of the oxygen from the atmosphere and from a protective environment around the well area and all those things are used in metal inert gas welding tungsten inert gas welding and all those things are used it is the air jacket inert gases jacket to put that and then vacuum vacuum is also there so produce high quality weld because there is no oxygen and no air and no possibility of oxide formation high quality but producing the vacuum is also a challenge high quality wells no possibility of oxidation used in electron beam welding that is a very sophisticated and very precise form of welding but costly one it is used in nuclear or special metal applications like zirconium hafnium and titanium all sorts of special applications the vacuum is created reduces impurity by a factor of 20 versus other methods because of the vacuum and all things uh, the things are much much favorable in terms of quality but the problem is that it is expensive and time material deposition rate is uh, very very low so it is a time consuming process whenever actually required this kind of precision and quality then people will go for uh, electron beam building otherwise not because of exorbitant cost of those kind of products so type of fusion weldings the first come oxyacetylene welding where oxygen and acetylene is mixed with uh, some ratios and on the basis of that using those flames used for localized melting and then subsequent solidification of the common molten pool and that way the joint is mad so shielded metal or that is known as a stick form and that is covered with the flux and this flux will be melted and produce those slags and that will create a jacket instantaneous jacket formation for the prevention of contamination and the metal inert gas welding will be provided the gaseous flow the advantage is that continuous welding is possible without having the change of the stick what is happening in the stick welding process then tungsten inert gas welding the difference between metal inert gas welding and tungsten inert gas welding is that me is using consumable electron sacrificial electron and tungsten inert gas is using non sacrificial electron the quality of the world is much better in tungsten but definitely the productivity is less me is highly productive process um, 
and uh, it can be done without the filler material and make electrode is a sacrificial one so electrode is acting as a sacrificial one and according to that it puts uh, it, it it is doing its uh, job in terms of uh, going for a long lengthy continuous welding process so this is the oxyacetylene welding based on the flame this flame is coming out of this uh, severe burning of those oxyacetylene flame and that can be the ratio it will be more of uh, oxyacetylene it will be carburizing flame more oxygen it will be oxidizing flame and maybe the proportion will be a neutral flame and they have their own character in terms of the flames and they use that localized uh, heating and localized melting of those parts and on the basis of that they will be melted together common melting pool subsequent solidification and that way the job is used so fusion of metal is achieved by passing the inner core of the flame over the metal and oxyacetylene can also be used for cutting metals also Welding arc also can be used as cutting metal so that immediately melting and gasification will occur. So welding can be used as cutting, laser welding also and welding can be used as joining. So one appropriately used can be used as cutting and joining also. Oxyacetylene can be great cutting activity but the problem is that very blunt way of cutting. The advantage is that in an inaccessible locations where the electricity is not there then and then also oxyacetylene cutting and oxyacetylene welding is can be possible so shielded metal arc welding is that electric arc is generated between a coated electrode and the parent material coated electrode in terms of those fluxes and coated electrode carries the electric current to form the arc produces a gas to control the atmosphere and provides filler material so sacrificial electrode and coating is the um, jacket produced and producing of the arc as uh, the gases in order to protect those arc and molten pool and the conventional AC alternative current or direct current can be used if the current is DC the polarity will affect the weld size and application and for AC it is changing continuously the polarities. So the shielded metal arc it will be continued sorry for the spelling mistake in the title so process is intense heat at the arc melts the tip of the electrode because of that plasma state and tiny drops of molten metal droplet deposition of all through these arc steam and are deposited on the parent material metal and as the molten metal is deposited a slag forms over the bead which is uh, melted from the flask and which serves as an insulation against the wear, wear air contamination during the welding. So it will also instantaneous jacket covering will be there of the molten metal, molten metal pool and all those things. And after a weld pass is allowed the cool the oxide layer is removed by chipping and hammer because the oxide will not have a very loose bond with these uh, the common melted pool. So one can really strike off those things from the layer itself. And that way it will be just uh, coming out cleaned with a wet brush before the next pass. So it will be ready while it is removed and otherwise the oxide layer will be there. Will be the problematic interfaces of less strength that has to be removed. Chipped and removed by the wet brush. And this is the inert gas welding and for materials such as aluminium or titanium which quickly form oxide layers because they are very susceptible to the oxidation a method has to be there to place an inert atmosphere around the well puddle had to be developed because otherwise oxide formation is prolific and it will make the well join unacceptable so this is the typical sketches of a metal inert gas welding process which uses a sacrificial or consumable electrode filled wire made of the best metal and inert gas is typically the argon because it is economically viable the best metal will be there and then the um, fade from the wear the consumable electrode through rollers and drive wheels the power sources are there and according to the dark will be there on the basis of this arc it will be there it's a 
it is a consuming electrode, continuous consuming electrode or sacrificial electrode. Electrode after melting it will act as a feather, electrode as well as a feather material. Continuous welding is possible. And is next is the tungsten inert gas welding. The tungsten name is because the electrode is made of tungsten. It is a refractory material. It can withstand a lot of heat and that is why it is made. It is a non-consumable electrode, mean consumable electrode. Tungsten electrode act as a cathode and a plasma is produced between the tungsten cathode and the base metal which heats the base metal into the melting point. So, in that electric arc it will create all those things and it will be the base metal and filler metal can be added to the pool depending on the requirement where you require the high material deposition rate we have to add the filler material where we do not require the high deposition rate we will not add these things. But that in MIG it is acting always as a filler material because electrode is melted and sacrificed. So, this is the best way of representation and that way the T is represented. The next is the welding positions. These positions are absolutely important and the skill and the test of the weldability skills and all those things have to be found it out at which configuration people can do this welding process. The first one is the flat one, easiest. Then people do all those things in the horizontal one, vertical is very challenging because droplets will come back. So according to that the droplets has to be deposited at that part but the biggest problem is overhead. And the certification of the welding on the basis of the different positions, whether a certified welder, flat weld certified cannot be a good welder of overhead, overhead require extra stringent certification. So welding positions and other things are absolutely and depending on the skill base how people can do on the different positions we appropriately. Then well defects, well defects are also very much there as in the cast defects, undercuts where appropriate uh, the places of the joining places are hungry of the molten weld pool that is undercuts or sometimes extra overlap. So grain growth while uh, ex with these wide uh, deviations of those temperature will exist between the metal and the heat affected zone. So, sometimes people have to do the preheating and cooling methods and all those things will affect the brittleness of this metal in this region. So, some strategies has to be carried out. As the biggest enemy, biggest culprit of the defect of the quality of casting is blow holes. So, welding also associated with blow holes of entrapped gases will pass out and whenever they are passing out, whenever they are escaping, they will keep their mark. So, our cavities uh, will be there, so their traces will be left. So, cavities caused by the gas entrapment inside there are lot of things are there, fluxes are there and inside uh, moistures will be converted into instantaneous steam at elevated temperature. So, the gas entrapment during the solidification will improve much, much uh, possibilities there and whenever they will be there, they will create the void, whenever they will come out of it, they will just create those porosities in the surface area. So, all those blow holes, there is a typical blow hole defect uh, and that also associated with the welding temperature and the speed of welding. Inclusions which are not intended, all those slags and other things if we are included into as a foreign substance in the weld pool, definitely the strength of the weld is compromised and because of that the strength will get diminished and that is the least last thing the welder wanted or the user wanted. So, same effect as the crack prevented by proper techniques, strategies has to be there, the formation of all those inclusions and defects will be minimized. Segregation, conduction where some regions of the metal are enriched with an alloy. Uh, so, some are not, so that homogeneity will not be there, that uniformity in terms of strength will not be there and that will be a problem and can be prevented by proper heat treatment and cooling. So, welding also sometimes require heat treatment because uh, then the homogeneity and the strength and other things will be regained 
and this kind of non-uniformity and other things can be negotiated with at the time of heat treatment and then subsequent cooling. Porosity, wherever the gas will trapped inside, it will be the <coughs> gas entrapment holes and if it comes out of it, it will make a mark on the surfaces and that is the formation of tiny pinholes generated by atmospheric or contaminations or some gases coming out of it. So that is there and prevented by protective shield. If it is appropriately shielded, so atmospheric contamination and on the basis of that the generation of all the pores, micro pores at the surfaces will be minimized. Residual stresses. This is a very big problem of the welding infrastructures. It will clear residual stresses and problem with the residual stresses is that this residual stresses will be relieved some point of the time. And whenever it will be relieved, it will have a dimensional distortion, shape distortion. And that is the last thing people wanted for these mission critical applications and precise applications. So rapid cooling and heating because of the welding process, rapid heating and rapid cooling results in thermal stresses determined to join the strength. This is sorry detrimental to join the strength. It is not at all a good story, good news for the joint strength. So we have to prevent. How it will be prevent? Age preparation. All those ages and the V groups and other things are appropriately prepared so that the molten metal will take the appropriate shapes and sizes, heat affected zone is contained, all those things. Control heat input, keep or intermittent well technique, so that heating and cooling cycle has to be controlled, not very much abrupt heating or abrupt cooling. Preheating reduces the expansion, already heated molten, heated uh, the parent material will just make the things, the heat changes, the thermal cycle operates with a lower range and that is great. Painting, some stretch it schools by heating with a hammer, use uh, with, with, with care since it may work harden and the metal. So little bit of painting will be there so that all those things are uh, getting cooled and all those things are uniform. Heat treatment, soak the metal at high temperature to relieve stresses. In at elevated temperature, mostly at the above the recrystallization temperature, all those reformation and recrystallization will take place, and the internal stresses generated due to rapid cooling and heating will be eliminated, relieving of the stresses. Many of the structures, after doing some kind of welding technique, it has to be stress relieved, maybe putting into the furnace, going for higher temperature, and then cooling down. Jigs and fixture prevent distortion by holding because some of the good jigs are required. Jigs will guide the tool and fixtures will locate a clamp and position of all those workpieces together. So that will not allow to go for the distortion. So appropriate design of the welding jig, welding jig and welding fixtures are required in order to implement all those dimensional accuracies and shape formation appropriately. So the different kind of joint designs are associated with the two plates in this of that B group combi combination configuration joint, but joint. Then these overlap part of it and with one the metallic strip strap joint. Fillet one is the I type of sections and along with those part will be joined that is called fillet and lap joints one along or over the other and that way it is joined it is lap joint and if you the formation of this L that is known as corner and that joint is known as corner joint. And there are different symbols, the electrode material, how the, those things will be represented. One part is uh, these electrode materials, all those things D is equal to the weld depth has to be represented. L1 is the weld length, L2 is the distance between the centers of the stitches and the field weld symbols all around those pipes and all those things are used as a guide for installation shipyards and all those things for the different kind of representation symbolic then this is the example of the welding symbol the different symbol this symbol for v group if v will be there that will be v group one sided welds are maximum 80 percent efficient two sides are 100 percent efficient so whenever those kind of 
joints will be there. So in two sides, if we do the welding process, that will be and that is represented by those things, those kind of typical symbols associated with those things. They will be represented by these kind of symbols. And if it is a two person, two sides one, the welding strength will be much, much greater. So the different welding symbols will be there. This is the typical symbol of the square groove. Square groove will be produced by these kind of symbol. Then we can find it out the backing, backing plate is required. Then the V groove, it is a V groove type of production. It is not the square groove. What kind of groove? V groove. This is the bevel groove. One side is straight and another one the angular. This is known as bevel groove formation. And this is the fillet joints, a J groove, and they are represented by these kind of symbol. This is flare bevel groove. All those things are represented by these kind of symbols. And this is bevel groove, uh, typical uh, bevel group associated with those things and represented by these symbols. So that way the group formations will be there. And it is for the different corner joints. Bevel groove for one corner and the J groove is for one corner. The square groove is for the other one. And that way the corners and other things are specified. So um, that's all for today's class. We have discussed about the very detailed part of the discussions of welding process and their classifications, their principles and all those things are ring and what are their strategies. We have discussed about the welding defects as it is coming from the casting and other part of it just like that but in a confined manner and then we have discussed about some of the symbols associated with those things and how they are represented and uh, that is uh, the introductory lectures related to the welding process in a nutshell. Thank you for your patient hearing. Hmm? Hmm. 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 Hmm.